Well, I hope you're navigating all that is going on uh, as opportunity to trust Christ and be grieved over what sin does and know that uh, we have good news for people because it has been a very sad week. Um, grieved at the way the so-called minister of the gospel opened up uh, the House of Representatives, closing his prayer with recognition of false gods, and then a man and a woman, and then of course uh, Wednesday's events on Capitol Hill's Hill, and uh, ugh, it's so distressing, isn't it? And yet it just shows us where people end up when God is jettisoned. And I don't know that we're close to what things were like when God moved in with the flood, but it sure seems like we're sliding that way. And, um, and so I think back to the prayer that we use from Ephesians chapter 3 on Sunday, and I, and I want to revisit that and reinforce that because uh, what I understand about the city of Ephesus when the church was planted there, when Paul wrote this prayer and prayed this prayer for the people at Ephesus, uh, I, I get the sense that Ephesus is somewhat similar in where it was at as the United States is today. And so maybe it even adds more importance to how this kind of praying needs to become part of our heart and soul for our own sake and for the sake of those who love Jesus and for the sake of us helping go and develop other people to follow him as well. And so you might remember that there's three parts to this prayer uh, in verses 14 through 19 of Ephesians chapter 3. And then there's the breaking out in praise in 20 and 21. And the three parts of the prayer are a prayer that we would live according to the riches of God's glory. And the only way to live according to the riches of God's glory is by the power of the person of the Spirit that is within each one of us, was placed within us as he came to live within us when we put our faith and trust in Christ. And the great work of the Spirit, as it's put in this prayer, is that Christ would dwell in our hearts by faith. And the emphasis is that when Christ dwells in our hearts by faith, we have a stability found in the love of God. We have a growing comprehension of the love of God by being with other believers as they talk about God's loving work in their life. And this is something that will continue on, I think, for all of eternity, because the love of God is incomprehensible. It is infinite. And we just get to see it and rejoice in it and be secure in it, in its finite applications to our own life, other people's lives, and to the world, ultimately, into the new heavens and new earth one day. And so, um, this is the way that even with all that's going on, we need to say, am I going to live according to the glories of the United States of America? Am I going to live according to the glory, the power of my own abilities or my own counsel or my own strength? No, this is a prayer that we would not live according to those things but that we would live according to the glorious riches of God our Father. And so just think about some of where you look for dependency, where you look for security. Do you look at it from Washington? Do you look at do you expect it to come from Washington? Do you look for that? Or do you look at it more 
according to the riches of the glories of our Father. Now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't hope for something from Washington. It just simply means that part of what's going on should help us to live more and more according to the riches of the glories that we have in Christ. More of the wisdom that we have. More of the glorious creation that God allows us to live in. And to do that by letting the Spirit of God give us the power and the ability to put our faith in Christ in very particular, specific situations. And so the man praying and concluding his prayer, amen, and a woman, that should motivate us to put our faith and trust more fully in Christ. All the rioting, all the, yeah, just evil stuff that happened at the Capitol, that should cause us to put our faith more and more in Christ and find our stability in His love and to make sure that we're gathering with other believers and that our primary conversation is about the love of God, not the unloveliness of what is going on in our world. And that we would know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that we could ask or think according to the power that works within us in the person of the Spirit, in His church, for His glory to the next generation and forever and ever. This is a prayer that God is in the business of answering. And He answers it according to his ability. And what's our part in it? We look to him. We live by faith and obedience to what he calls us to do. And we continue to grow with Christ dwelling more fully, experiencing more of the love of God as we live according to the riches of the glory of our Father. And what a wealthy father we have. So, I just pray that you would incorporate this prayer into your own heart. And, and make it a way you pray. And that the distressing things that happen, whether it's on a national level, or whether it's on a family level, whatever level it's at, that this would be the prayer that would jump out of your heart because he is and he will do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think. And he will do it according to the power that dwells within us, within the person of the Spirit of God. He will do it for his glory in the church on into the next generation forever and ever. And to that we can say, so be it. Amen.